Right, today I'm going to fix up my old transport trailer. I've had it for a couple of years now and it's always had a problem with the axle assembly. It's actually got a, a single axle and the wheels are on like a swing arm and one of the swing arms has been uh, bent. The wheels are sort of on a constant lean outwards. It wears the inside of the tyres quite badly. And um, also all, all the bushings in here are worn out. So it's got quite a bit of play in that pivot. So I could uh, recondition it. It would mean I'd have to make another one of these swing arms and um, pop out all the bushings and replace the shafts because the shafts are worn out as well. So I'm just going to get rid of uh, the old axle and install uh, standard axles on springs and I'll replace all the brakes and everything as well. I'll change the deck as well because it's actually too high and too heavy with all this timber here. So I'll get rid of a lot of that timber and um, yeah, strengthen it up while I'm at it and uh, yeah, get rid of the rust and give it a paint job. not ideal <laughs> and like all these pins are pretty sloppy and there is a bit of play in that one as well so both sides would have to be done pins bushings and yeah that this would have to be rebuilt because it's it's got a bend in it you can see this this tire has been wearing out because it's always on an angle when it's got a load on it so get rid of all that and Replace it with standard springs and axles. You can see when they built it, they have been a bit lazy with the welding as well. Like I would have put a, a few beads along there, and they haven't done the, the bottom sections either. You can see the welds are starting to crack there on all the joints. And yeah, so I'll just go through and do a, do a lot more welding, strengthen it up, and um, yeah, it should be a lot stronger. Right, I've ground all the old pins and brackets off there. This section does look a little bit light for me. So I'll bolt that to the frame. That takes in all these uh, main cross members here and these diagonal sections. So it's gonna make it a lot stronger there. That's basically how it's gonna go. It's got a load balancer in the center there. Three and a half ton spring set. That should be plenty for what I wanna carry.
All right, I've done all the welds underneath and I've painted these rails here so when I put these bearers on it's not going to rust under there um, and I'll just bolt those in place. That's definitely more rigid now, I can even feel it just jumping on this on this end before that was twisting. And now it's pretty solid so that's a lot better. I don't want to have to put all that timber back on because it's just too heavy and it's higher than it needs to be so uh, what I think I'll do is just add more support um, where there's big gaps here just along each side and just sort of have rails along both sides. I think I'll get rid of this here because that's not really doing much. It's not a lot of strength in that and I will put a box section from there to there and then a piece across. Same thing there get rid of that there box section up and that's just gonna give it a lot more strength I think and it gives me something to tie into for putting a cross piece along there I've cut out these cross pieces which will go in there at all the, all the big gaps both sides and that will just give a bit more support to the deck boards so I'll weld those in there but uh, it's galvanized iron I'm just using what I've got lying around here welding uh, zinc galvanizing produces a toxic smoke so I'll grind that back uh, all around back to bare metal so that um, I don't get any of that toxic smoke and it also sticks a lot better as well when I'm doing a lot of grinding I always use the uh, full face mask stops the sparks getting in and filters out all the dust in the air The trailer was quite well balanced uh, with the old axle so I'm going to have the pivot point at the same place which is right at that centre bar there so I'll mark that all out and um, grind back the galvanising uh, so I get a decent weld. I've left about two inches of leaf spring coming out of the end of the hanger there. Um, if you have it too close to the to the edge of the hanger it can pop out if you hit a curb or something so you want a little bit of overhang there just to keep it nice and secure. Got to make sure that the tire isn't going to hit the frame here so i've taken some measurements and that seems about a good spot right there the tire will be just inside the mud guard there so that's about right there i think and the brake caliper has plenty of room to come out there so i just have to measure the same on the other side uh, from the side of the frame there and then i can cut the axle tube there and weld the stub axles in I'm going to put the brake on the rear axle uh, because the brake lines are already here and also general consensus seems to be that it's best to install the brakes on the rear axle uh, when using this sort of spring setup.
To get the um, Starbuck saw in there I have to take out that seam weld there. So I have to get the file and just take that down to the face there and then I'll be able to slip the axe on in the middle. It's pretty much flush with the bottom there now. Um, I ended up putting it up a bit higher just to make it more comfortable. I've done both ends, it took about probably half an hour on each end. The stub axle fits in there but it is quite loose so what I'm going to do is use shims on all these edges uh, just to get it all perfectly aligned. Just under 39 diameter. 39.7. I want it to be an interference fit so it's nice and tight so the shims need to be around about 0.8 of a millimeter. I'll just take a few different measurements there. Yeah that's about the same. That's pretty close there. 0.21. Two of those on each side to make around about 0.8. They can be folded in half, like this, just to double up the thickness. Four of those around the shaft. And I need to figure out what position to weld the stub axle into the axle tube so that the brake caliper is in the right place. I think it's going to get squashed by the spring if I go under. Um, looks like I might have to take the brake line um, behind the spring there. So now I know that um, where the brake caliper needs to go I can mark this. Um, so that will be the top side because this is the locating bolt here which has to go through a hole in the axle so we'll have this face up against there. So now I know to have this line in line with this. That locating pin is just over 12 millimeters in diameter so I'll drill a slightly larger hole than 12 to locate the axle in the right place. I've drilled the locating holes in the axle tube and also the puddle weld holes for which I'll be filling in with weld. Um, I had to make sure the springs were exactly square to the base of the trailer and made sure everything was lined up on both sides and there's plenty of clearance between the brake caliper and the edge of the trailer bearing in mind that as the brake pads wear these will come out so you want a bit of clearance between there and the maximum travel of the springs and I line up these marks here so I know the brake caliper is in the right place I've double checked everything and I'm pretty sure it's ready to be welded now you got to make sure when you dry fit the, um, the bearings that you don't get any dust or you don't do any grinding around it because you don't want um, any, any bits of metal or dust in your bearings so yeah I'll pack those away again and weld the stubs to the axle tube. It is a bit of a, a, a rigmarole getting everything perfect like it did take like a good hour just to rig all that out make sure everything was perfectly level and square um, so yeah you can see the benefit of buying ready-made axles because 
so I've got all the gear to do it a lot quicker than I can but um, yeah it saves a bit of money doing it this way but you've got to get it right add a drop of oil onto them this time um, just so that it slides in easier. It was a bit tight last time. Good, that's the top, that's the spring hole. That's in line with the space and it matches up with the other end as well so looking good. I can push, I can push that in now. Okay, I've got both of the stub axles in, so I'll dry fit the hubs again, tighten them up, and measure face to face of the hubs just to make sure it's all perfect before I uh, tack weld it. All those four measurements are even, so I'll give it a quick tack weld and then uh, measure again and make sure it's all still good and then I can weld it in properly. I'll leave those hubs on while I tack it, um, but I'll just wrap it up in a wet rag because I don't want anything getting into that bearing. That's looking pretty much perfect actually, so I'll take the hubs off and weld it up properly now. I'm pretty happy with that. Right, that's the stub axles welded into place. I'll just let those cool down naturally, I won't put any water on them because I don't want to harden them and make them brittle or anything, so we'll just, just leave that to cool down. It hasn't moved at all, I'll just prime up the welds and it's ready for painting. Alright, now onto the front axle. Um, this one is not braked, so the axle tube is going to be longer this one doesn't have the, um, the brake holder on it. So I'm going to go 20 millimeters from the edge of the seal lip there and that gives us just about 80 mil in the tube. I'll line that up with the end of the other one bang on about there. So that one will go that far in And I'll do the other end to figure out where to cut the tube. So I'll cut the tube there, and um, once I've cut it, I can move it a little bit either way just to fine tune the axle length. I'll get rid of the bearing um, from drilling the holes so the shins slide in there easier. Yep. Bang. 
thing on them. Perfect. Yep, that's spot on. So the locating holes are lined up on both axles and the ends of the axles are exactly the same length so I can weld that into place now. I've filed off any uh, rough edges here so that the ruler sits exactly flat on that edge and just measuring this um, stub axle here it is slightly out. I'll just see if I can gently persuade it that way. Let's see what happens. So I'm just hitting on the meaty part here, I don't want to hit on the end because I might bend it. Right, that has moved slightly but we're still like a quarter of a millimetre out so I'll give that another thump I think. Oh uh, yep, yeah, that's pretty close now. So that's 15.58 and this side around about the same. So the measurements with the straight edge and the calipers were quite accurate because that's uh, spot on between the hubs. So now the axles are made up, I can take the springs and axles away, grind the rust off, grind the paint back and um, give it a paint job. I found these um, discs were the best thing to get rid of the uh, heavy rust, sort of cutting into it like this. Um, so I went through about seven of those. Um, most, of the, most of the framework was fairly light rust and just paint, and I used the flapper disc on that. Yeah man, that was hard work. So I'll do the bottom side, and once that's all done I'll flip it over and do the other side. Want to make sure there's no uh, splatter from the welding on the shaft. Make sure it's all perfectly clean. Get any swarf off the threads um, and just keep everything clean as I go along. Looking good. 
put the uh, seal backing ring on there first. Heavy duty bearing grease here. Just make sure my fingers are nice and clean. And so I just want to like force the grease and around bearing, pack it all in there and get it all on the inside of the rollers. Jam it in there. seal goes in there like that and that goes against that um, washer there first of all I have to get that in there quite a tight fit as well so I have to hammer that in keep it all nice and clean and take that in And some more grease in there. Get some grease in around there as well. That can go on. Right. That's all sitting in there nicely I just want to do that up until I feel the nut gets a bit tighter and then spin it, make sure everything's bedded in. I'm going to back it off until the hole lines up with the castle nut. And that feels pretty good actually. I'll do up that brake and kill it now. That's feeling good. There's no play in there and it's spinning nice and freely even though the brakes are holding it back. That feels good. Probably end up putting bearing buddies on uh, later on as well so I can just pump grease into them. straight up and down there and all even so it's looking good yeah damn near perfect actually that will do me Alright, I'll bleed those brakes and make sure there's no leaks in the system. So I'll start with the brake that's furthest away from the reservoir, which is this one. I'll put a clear tube on there. 
the other end of the tube in a jar. Loosen that off. So that opens the valve up so the fluid can get through. Now all I have to do is pump this, lock it, and that pumps the fluid through, but you want to hold it on. Tighten this valve up again. It's a bit of a palaver by yourself. You've got to keep going back and forth. Let that off. You want to always make sure there's fluid in the reservoir as well. Loosen this off again. And on. So just basically keep doing this over and over until you get all the bubbles out of the line. And then move on to the next break. As the fluid goes through the line, fluid level drops, so I'll just top that up. I'm not seeing any more air coming out of there uh, in the last three pumps, so I think we can assume that all the air has been purged out. So I'll tighten that one up and move on to the other side. That's looking good. Oh. No leaks, no drips coming up, it's looking good. These supports are slightly lower than the uh, rest of the frame. You can see how I've welded it below this. So just to make up that difference, I'm going to put pieces of rubber down there. And that makes everything nice and flush. Alright, that's all finished. That turned out pretty well, I think. It was a solid week of hard labour, but uh, definitely worth it. So it's lighter, lower, and slightly narrower than it was before, so pretty much better all round, and there's no more slop in the axle, so that should be good for another 20 years, hopefully. The fellow I bought the uh, David Brown 1200 off a while ago, He's actually uh, moving off the orchard, and he's got another Fiat, I think it's 5560, um, that he wants to get rid of, and he's asked me if I want to take it away. So I'll go and have a look at it tomorrow. I don't know what state it's in. I don't, don't even know if it's running, to be honest. The tractor and a little mower as well. I think it's around about 3.2 ton all up, and the trailer rating is about 3.5 ton. So it'll be a good test for it anyway. Seems to be holding up all right on the bumpy driveway. I'll check all the bolts just to make sure nothing's come loose. Mainly these spring bolts down here. They do tend to loosen up when they're, first, when they're new. Yeah, they're not too bad. Because these plates here, they bend 
um, to suit the shape of the spring so I'll check those a few times over the next few weeks Just a little bit of a tweak not too bad really these ones all look all right they've got nylock nuts on them so they shouldn't come loose yep, pretty good nothing leaking from the brakes wheel bearings feel pretty good nothing's gonna fall off there so we'll go and have a look at that tractor and um, see what it's like thanks for watching guys catch you next time